What's wrong? Sergeant Hudson, I just realized I've lost pace count. Have you been keeping track with your beads? I think I forgot to move one for the last 100 meters, but we've traveled about two clicks from the last observation point. We should be within 200 meters of that. All right, that gives us some idea of where we are. Since we were traveling in the correct direction, hopefully we are still on course. Let's stop for a map check to make sure. In a thick forest like this, keeping an accurate pace count is essential to ensure we don't get lost. It won't happen again, Sergeant. Luckily, as long as you can identify a few points on the ground that you can also see on the map, there's a technique you can use to relocate our position. Does this technique sound familiar to you? Resection, Sergeant. There are definitely two ground features I can see that we can locate on the map. Good thinking, Cartwright. With that straightened out, let's perform resection. I'll find the magnetic azimuths. All right, the magnetic azimuth to the bend is 89 degrees, 14 degrees from the pond. Does anyone know the next step? Well, since we're using resection and not intersection, we need the back azimuths, right? We also need to convert the magnetic azimuths to grid azimuths. That's right. Can you make these calculations for me? After converting the magnetic azimuths to grid azimuths, the back azimuth from the stream bend is 273 degrees, and the back azimuth from the pond by the draw is 198 degrees. This looks correct. It always saves time to be quick. Good job, Cartwright. Let's go ahead and plot the coordinates of the intersecting back azimuths. Specialist Cartwright, go ahead and finish what you started. The coordinates are 53508377. That checks out. Making quick work of resection definitely helps save lost time. Now that we've confirmed our position, let's get moving again. All right, let's halt for a moment. I see another observation point in the distance that I want to use. See that hilltop with that massive evergreen tree on the summit? That point will provide us with observation, cover, and concealment. Before we head to that point, I think we should split into two teams to observe the area. After seeing that BFB patrol earlier, I don't want to take chances crossing this terrain without thorough observation. Understood, Sergeant. Cartwright, since you have primary pace count and alternate compass responsibilities, I'm going to need you to help navigate one of these teams. I won't let you down, Sergeant. All right, I've marked our routes on the map. Let's get organized and start investigating the area. My team is marked Team A. All right, soldiers, let's keep the Oakok principles in mind while we observe the area. Menace 6, Romeo. This is Menace 6. Over. Yes, Menace 6. We read you. Over. Is your route clear? Over. The route is confirmed clear, and we are located at the hilltop in grid square 5686. Over. Good. I need you to find the magnetic azimuth from your position. We need to use intersection to find the coordinates of the second observation point. Roger that, minus six. Magnetic azimuth from our location is 291 degrees, over. I have four degrees from our location. I need you to calculate the coordinates of the next point, over. Roger, minus six, over. Radio back when you have the coordinates, out. All right, Cartwright, do you know what you're doing? I can help out. Yeah, all these numbers are confusing. I'm definitely glad I'm not the only one doing this. Yeah, I think I got this, guys. Samir, if you could check my calculations, I'd appreciate it. First, we need to convert these magnetic azimuths to grid azimuths so we can draw them on the map. The grid azimuth from the pond is 6 degrees, and the grid azimuth from the hill is 296 degrees. 
Those azimuths are slightly off, but they intersect less than 100 meters from the observation point. Nice job, Cartwright. We should probably go ahead and find the coordinates of the intersection now. The azimuths intersect at 5429870 Good job, Cartwright. We should radio Sergeant Hudson again and give him the coordinates. Sergeant Hudson will be happy we're moving this along quickly. How do you guys decide on a code to use? You have to get an authorized code. The procedure is outlined in AR 380 40. I think it's called Safeguarding and Controlling Communication Security Material. It's important to use a code just in case the message gets intercepted somehow. That's the only problem with the standard way of determining coordinates. Everyone knows how to read coordinates that way. Ah, I gotcha. That makes sense. Hello, Sergeant. Excellent job, Cartwright. I'm glad I can put my faith in you. Thank you, Sergeant. You've definitely proven that you can navigate without guidance. All right. From here, we can see the layout of the camp. I had time to mark the camp's layout on the map. See the cache site? Yes, Sergeant. Before we move on, let's determine how much farther we have to go. Does anyone remember how to find the flat distance? Flat distance. How is that different from distance again? Flat distance means you aren't accounting for changes in terrain. The actual distance ends up longer because the ground rises and falls. For now, we're just going to find the flat distance on the map from here to the cache site. Then we can use the time distance formula to get an idea of how long it will take to get to the cache site. Well, for that you just use the bar scale, right, Sergeant? That's right, Private. Cartwright, why don't you show Ebert how to use it? The cache is about 1,200 meters away. Good. Let's use that number to estimate how long it'll take us to get there. All right, it's time to move to the extraction point. It's located in a depression to the southeast of our position, along the dirt road leading into the camp. I'm ready to be out of this forest. Isn't that the truth? We're all ready to get back, but the mission isn't over until we get to the extraction point safely. To make that happen, the first thing we need to do is submit the grid coordinates of the extraction point to Sergeant Quesnel. Cartwright, I know you won't let me down. Find those coordinates for me. The extraction point's coordinates are 56858590. Good job, Cartwright. 
All right, it's time to head to the extraction point and get out of here. We've done a good job of staying on track. We're doing well on time. Do in part to your help with navigation, Cartwright. Keep up the good work. You're my hero, Cartwright. <laughs> I'm just happy to hear that we're on track. Let's take a quick break. We're almost halfway there, soldiers. While we're catching our breath for a minute, I'm seeing some more major and minor terrain features. Does anyone feel confident pointing them out? I might be able to do it with some help, Sergeant. I think I can help you out. Exactly, that's the symbol for a depression. Let's move on. Exactly. That's the symbol for a draw. Let's move on. Exactly. That's the symbol for a hill. Let's move on. Exactly. That's the symbol for a valley. Thanks for volunteering, Ebert and Cartwright. Let's go ahead and push on to the extraction point. The day is almost over. It's been a long day. Yeah, no kidding. I could sleep for 12 hours. What the? Look, that way. That wasn't a military plane. BFB, killing civilians. Things are about to change. Whatever just happened, it looks like the conflict is just beginning. Review the choices you made in the scenario and see the results of your decisions.